What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com bringing home the bacon NFL DFS video stack video for week three. So this is something new I wanted to try. If this is something you guys like, let me know. There's going to be an article every single week, and uh, I'll do a video every single week on this. So I've gone through, and I'm looking at stacks. So it's not just the main because there are a couple we do have monday night games that i really like the stack on and we have two games so if you want to play um just kind of looking uh if you like it let me know but we're going to go over the top five stacks that i like for week three it's not thursday night football it is sunday stacks and monday so um if it's something you do like and, and you like stacks just like a main slate let me know um trying to give you guys as much information and just anything we can do to help you become a better dfs player so just kind of looking you can do a sunday through monday uh which is probably what you play 15 games so let's do this so sunday through monday we're going to look at them i'm going to give you the plays we have an article as well um in the description of this video will be the article now we're going to go through it we're going to look at some things so if you have questions get those answered but i do like these um, we still have the DraftKings um, down below in the description. We have the DraftKings link to our our league. $10 a week. Build your lineup out there. We have 200 spots available. Uh, we only had four people uh, put in lineups last week. So kind of like a, like a little cash game there. So obviously would love to get more. Um, but check it out. If you have any questions, get those down below. This is main slate every Sunday. So that being said, I do have five stacks that I really like. We'll go through it. We'll look at the bring back, what I'm talking about. We'll look at the Vegas numbers. We'll look at it all. So the first stack that I like today or this week is Kirk Cousins in the Minnesota Vikings offense versus the Chargers. So just kind of looking at this, Kirk Cousins at 6,900 um, going up against uh, the Chargers. They rank 31st uh, against the quarterback right now. So I really like that. We were able to see what he was doing last week. Uh, he, he had a really good game last week against Philly. I, I love this matchup here. I would pair him up. So just kind of looking at this. Um, oh, it's the first game. I missed it. It's the first game right here. I would pair him up right here. Kirk Cousins. Now you could go to one of two ways here. You could go uh, Justin Jefferson. We know that he's really good, obviously. Game logs, really good games here. Very expensive. So a a Kirk Cousin, a Justin Jefferson. If you want to bring it back, there's two other ones that I like. So we could either go Addison because... So the uh, defense against the quarterback here, 31st. The, uh, the defense against the opposing wide receivers, the Chargers are dead last against wide receivers. So as you can see, you want to go Justin Jefferson, you go Jordan Addison here. Game logs, he's had really good games here. He's 5,500, so you're going to save a ton. Um, his matchup, they are given uh, just a ton um, here. The Chargers defense is bad. Um, so you could go Jordan Addison, you could go Osborne. I'm not saying stack all of these. I'm saying one or two of these. So just looking at this, if you take Jefferson out because his salary is going to be up there, You've got these two that equal basically one of him. Um, so Addison coming off of the two 16-plus games on DraftKings. you got Osborne for even cheaper coming off a decent game here but did have a touchdown in that game um, last week. So it really depends. I do like these. I would say two uh, pass catchers here, whether or not you want to go uh, Addison and Osborne or you want to go Jefferson and Addison there however you want to do it. Then we come back and we look at the uh, Chargers. You come back around. So the game right now has an expectant uh, over under 54. So they think, and now I know we went through this last week with the chart or with the uh, Chiefs and they didn't hit it. But as of now, um, it opened with 51 and a half and now it's gone up to 54. And, uh, the Vikings are expected, their um, team total is 27.26 right now. So I think we want to get exposure to this game. I, we want to look at the over-under. We want to look at the um, intended team total. 
or individual team total and see that they're expected to score a ton of points. If you look at it, they are expected to, or implied team total, they're expected to have the second most amount of points behind the Chiefs. So we look at this, um, I like them, but then you have to come back because obviously if the Vikings are ahead by that much, they're going to have to be throwing it on the other side. So that is a, a Keenan Allen. If you want to spend 6700 obviously he had a fantastic game last time, 34.1, 111 yards. Uh, you could look at Mike Williams. He had 83 yards, 16.7. Um, he's 6000 So you could look at him. Uh, Josh Palmer is a cheap option at 3300 uh, He hasn't done a ton. Um, I do believe he had a touchdown taken back last week. So he is a cheap option at 3300 um, so you could go really one of two ways here. You go Mike Williams. Um, you want to go there. You go Mike Williams at six thousand, or you could. Go, I think you could do Keenan Allen if you don't do Jefferson. So it just looking, and then yeah, you these are stacks. You'll have to find those value plays within like the running back, other position. But a Josh Palmer could be a cheap option if you don't want to go uh, Allen there. Uh, Palmer here. You've got Quentin Johnston. Um, hasn't done much so i think i would either go alan williams or josh palmer and we could go from there so you could do a stack that way that is the first stack that i like so i do like that as number one number two the cowboys give me some dac give me a dac stack now where are they here they are going up against arizona um so we'll look at this qb wise obviously dac prescott's where you're going to go uh Tony Pollard. Love Tony Pollard. If you've watched our ranking video, which I will link down below, uh, he's my number one running back this week. So Tony Pollard. And then it really depends. Um, people are going to go with the wide receivers. They're going to look at Lamb. Cooks has hurt. They're going to look at Brown on the other side. They're going to look at Gallup, Wilson. Um, just depends on which one you're going to go here. I'm going a different way. I am going right here. I'm going to tight end. I'm going to Ferguson. Now, Arizona right here. They rank 22nd against the opposing tight ends through first two weeks. We saw him have a touchdown in week one. He's a cheap 3,600 option there. So a smaller little stack of uh, Dak, Pollard, and Ferguson. And then we got to bring it back somewhere. So looking at the bring back, there's not a lot to like. I don't like a ton in this Arizona offense. Zach Ertz is still only 3,500. Game logs coming off of 56 yards here at 21 in the first. We, he started the season off hurt. I think he's coming around um, as long as this game can stay close-ish. Or if they're throwing from behind, Zach Ertz is going to be in there. So that allows you right there to do an average of 5,600 across the board there. You could even go with Cowboys defense. Um, let's just look at all the defenses. Just overall, you can we can kind of go through. Uh, maybe you go down to the Chiefs defense against uh, Justin Fields and that mess of a, a Chicago Bears team. You could look at that. You could look at the Jaguars at 3,800. You could look at the Patriots against the Jets at 3,500. I mean, you 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 have opportunities here. Um, I wouldn't go. I don't think I'd go with the Jets. Uh, you go with the Bills at 2,900. The Bills have been averaging 7.5. I mean, they're coming off 10 fantasy points there. So you could look at that. I mean, the Bills at 2,900. I don't mind. But again, just kind of look at this i don't mind the chiefs here against uh justin fields so then that that brings you to an average of 6100 across the board there i think i really like that so that is why i've got the cowboys as number two stack on the week number three now this is why it kind of sucks that there's games on monday but if you're playing this all day slate i do like the rams um versus cincy so coming in here matt stafford he's 5600 he's criminally underpriced right now uh, we, you can kind of see th he's gone 300, he's got 641 yards in two games. So drafting him quarterback, number one, right there at 5,600 already off to a good start compared to everybody else. Then it comes down to wide receivers. Is it going to be Puka? Is he going to continue this absolute dominance here? Or are we going to get sucked into this one? I don't know, but at 6,100, I could look at that. And then it just depends on, you know, the other ones. Uh, do we want to go with a 2-2 Atwell here at 5,200? Coming off two pretty good games. Whereas we were all over Van Jefferson last year. Really hasn't done much this year. So looking at that, a 2-2 Atwell here, I'm okay with. Uh, Squarenek here, 
not much. So if I'm going with that, I would like that information to be those three. And then if you want to, so it could be Stafford, uh, you could go Puka. It really depends. You don't have to go both of these. You could come in and go Kyron Williams now that Cam Akers is gone. Game log wise, coming off two really good games. You could look at that. The over under in this game is, let's check it out. The over-under currently opened at 46, went down to 43 and a half, and the Rams are not even the favorite in this one. They're two and a half point underdog, uh, implied team total, 21.19, where the Bengals are 22.49. And it really will depend on which Joe Burrow we get out of here. So you could look at this, and then you obviously want to have a bring back option here. So looking at just the the uh, Bengals here now, Jamar Chase has not done much at all he's expensive he is eight thousand he will come along but if you don't want to pay up at eight thousand you can look at t higgins here um he had a really good game against baltimore week two uh he had 12 targets eight receptions 89 yards and two tutties here um so he's doing really good so if you don't want to pay up you go 67 here joe mixon gets involved if you look at this he gets involved with the run game and the passing game has double digits here he's 6500 you could look at that and you could still build around now i'm not saying stack that many from this game i am saying though those are the options that i look at i don't know if i'd go any lower um i mean there's tyler boyd who's coming off an okay game 52 yards he's a cheap option at 4000 you could look at um depending on which way you want to go so i might go higgins or if you want to save and you want to go away from that then you still have an average of 5200 you bring in the defense depending on which defense again like i said you can really just take any defense you want to go the chargers or the chiefs again you still average 5700 with that so that is number three and like i said and you've seen it in the past I write this stuff down. That's what we do. I write this by hand because the more I write it, the more I'm, I'm more familiar with it. So uh, stack number four brings us to the Atlanta-Detroit game. Now we look at this game. Atlanta and Detroit. Let me find the game real quick. Where is it? So they've got uh, an over-under. It opened at 46, and we're still at 46. The uh, Detroit Lions are opening as a three-point favorite with an implied team total of 23.95 compared to the Falcons, 22.39. So not that much difference. This game really could go either way. Um, should see a ton of points in this one. Uh, be on the lookout, but I definitely like this. So what am I looking at? I kind of like a Desmond Ritter here. Now you're going to say 1500 from Jared Goff. So putting in Desmond Ritter here, um, we can see what he's coming off of. Last game, 22.38 on DraftKings, 237 yards. Did have an interception, um, but had a passing touchdown. I mean, he looks 50. For, he looks right. His picture, he looks 50. Um, did have a rushing touchdown. So he is getting those points. He is rushing. Um, going up against this, you can see that um Desmond Ritter or the Detroit Lions in in two games are giving are ranked 28th against opposing quarterbacks. So we look at Desmond Ritter. Now, it will come down to, you know, just depending uh Drake London's only 5000. So you could look at Drake London. And then the running back situation, they they are involved in the passing. You can see Bijan is he's 7800. Uh, coming off back-to-back 20-plus -back games. And then if you think Algier is going to come through, you saw he dominated week one, did not in week two. Could come down to either one. Um, so let's just say, for instance, you wanted to go with Bijan. You want to go Ritter, Bijan, and London. I could see this. Or we can come down here. We can go to tight end. Kyle Pitts is only 39th ranked. And Detroit's defense against the opposing tight ends right now is ranked 30th of 32. He's coming off not very much here, but he would definitely be a cheap option that you could look at if you don't want to go with Robinson. So you could go Ritter, London, Pitts in that sense. And then we want to bring it back to Detroit. We want to look at the Detroit uh, options here. So D David Montgomery currently is remain sidelined, did not practice on Thursday. Game logs, back-to-back, -back, same mount. If he is out, Jameer Gibbs at 6,600 is supposed to be involved in both the passing and the rushing. So if you look at this, 
Uh, Detroit against the run is fifth overall. And then wide receiver, um, they're also fifth against the wide. Well, hold on. Atlanta against the um, wide receivers. Let's just look. It really depends. I mean, you see a lot of question marks here. You see a lot of Amon Ross St. Brown is questionable. Jo uh, Josh Reynolds is questionable. So um, bringing it back kind of makes sense against running backs. Kind of makes sense to go Gibbs. And then if you, you know, you want this, we kind of got to wait on some news for these two. Um, if these guys are out, you've got Khalif Raymond here, who's cheap, who had 46 yards and a touchdown in week one, also will run the ball a little bit. Um, Marvin Jones Jr., he's not really doing much. He's just a name that's coming back. He's very cheap, 3,200. We could see these things happen. Just depends on these two big names here. Now, if Amon Ross St. Brown is out, Josh Reynolds at 4,200, I absolutely love. So you could look at a stack like that, a game stack. And then you can still average this. And you come in, you want to go, like I said, the defense is really doesn't matter. Let's just say the Cowboys defense, since they're most expensive. You're still averaging almost 7,000 at each position here. So a an Atlanta stack, I really like here. And it just allows you to open up. And it, I mean... 7,000 7, as an average overall. If you want to go running backs, you're just looking at 7,000. That's a... I don't know if I'd use Josh Jacobs, but that's a Joe Mixon in that game on Monday that we could look at. A Ramondre Stevenson who had a touchdown uh, last week. He's got about 15 fantasy points average in two games. Um, bring it down. It really just depends uh, who you want to go with here. But just in the running back situation, averaging 7,000 is not bad. Then you look at wide receiver. Um, just in that 7,000 range, if you want to continue with that average, T. Higgins that we already talked about. Um, you could look at Mike Evans, who is coming off of a fantastic game, 171 yards against the Bears. Now he's going up against Philly, who get are ranked 28th overall. That gives us 7,100. And then you have a flex, which you could do. And if you feel confident, like we talked about in the first game, the over-under, you want to go Keenan Allen with the bring back. And that brings us to a running back situation where we can afford all the way up to Stevenson or Mixon. And that brings in some of the plays. Now, I don't think that is like a lineup I will have a bunch of exposure to, but I will take uh, some pictures of it. I'm going to take a screenshot of this on my phone because like I'm 50 years old and this might be a lineup I throw in there and this is just a stacked lineup that I'm using when we're stacking um, so just in my mind this is how I build lineups out for you guys as well so the last one it really depends but we're bringing it back to the first game that we talked about we're bringing it back to the Chargers Justin Herbert uh, Minnesota's given up, uh, or they're ranked 22nd against the opposing. We see that Justin Herbert comes in back-to-back um, -back 20 plus games, 300 yards his last game against Tennessee. We put him in there. He does have a quarterback rating 101.3 on the year. So then we decide who are we going to go with. Everyone and their mom was on Josh Kelly last week. He really did nothing. I would stay clear of that. I would look at the wide receivers. Again, we kind of already talked about the bring back against the uh, Vikings. I would go Keenan Allen. If you want to look, you could look at Mike Williams. Let's just say Mike Williams, uh, tight end, Gerald Everett. We could look at that. And then a Minnesota bring back. So just kind of like the opposite of what we were talking about against, Min or against Minnesota. You want to have that bring back. Look at the wide receivers. Osborne at 4,000. You go Addison at 5,500. You go Jefferson. Um, let's say we didn't go Addison and we went with Justin Jefferson here at 9,300, then you're only averaging 3,900. So you can't really do much there. You take Jefferson out, you bring in um, you bring in Jefferson. You could bring in Hawkinson, who had two touchdowns last week, I believe, right? I think he had two. Yeah, he had two touchdowns. Him coming in at 6,500 is a little bit expensive. Um, if you want, it, That brings it at 4,600, or you come back, you could go Addison at 5,500. Let's just go wide receiver. You go Addison at 5,500. That still allows you at 4,900. We bring in the defense overall, all the defenses. You could still average right here 5,000 around. Then you look at running backs around that mark. Um, let's say around the 5,000 mark for running backs. Gets a little bit, you know, if you think Algier is going to have a better game here 
he could come in. If Cam Akers comes in and plays, I don't know if he will. Um, that Jerome Ford should be very cheap. I mean, he's 4,800. Obviously, we know what he did in week two on Monday night. Um, he's going to be the lead back. You could go Jerome Ford there. You want to get a little bit... Uh, it's kind of a zone. I mean, you could see Tony Jones Jr. here. He came in, had two touchdowns there. Um, you could look at him. Obviously, very contrarian. This is not the stack I'm going with. I'm just showing you how you can get around it and build. And then we could look at, you know, if you think Madison's going to be involved in that game, we could look at that. Gabe Davis here, we saw him last week have a touchdown. You could have a stack kind of like this going forward. So uh, not the best stack there, but those are definitely stacks that I like. Those are my top five stacks. It will really depend on some other news that comes out um, and how we build around there afterwards. So looking at this, not saying take these as all of the stacks, but these are my top five. If you have questions, let me know. This will be an article down below as well. Obviously, the more likes on these videos, the more love we know. So I really enjoy everything. And that's what we've got. If you have questions, you got comments, you like these videos, you want to see more of these, let us know. Good luck. We do have a Discord. I want everyone to join the Discord. I want it to be more social for the NFL season. So good luck in week three. Let's bring home some bacon this week. Peace.